Previously, we talked all about bed leveling, but if your nozzle isn't close enough to your build plate, that's not gonna matter anyways. So let's talk about Z offset and why it is as important, if not more important than bed leveling. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here and you're new to 3D printing, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed if you aren't. We're gonna be talking all about Z offset and some common issues that might keep your prints from sticking to your build plate. Last week we talked all about bed leveling. If you missed that video all about bed leveling, make sure to check it out. We'll link to it in the card above as well as in the description down below. When you're done with that one, come on back here because there's a lot to talk about that bed leveling just doesn't cover. One of the big ones is Z offset. When we look at Z offset, and we're running a Z offset test right now on the Prusa Mini, it comes down to the amount of squish. Just like I want you to squish that like button. That's not weird. Let's go ahead and assume your bed is level and your bed is perpendicular to your nozzle. If for some reason it is higher on one side than the other, you will notice this in your first layer. If on one part of your build plate, the lines aren't even touching each other. And in other areas, the lines are disappearing into the bed itself. You don't have an actual trammed bed with your X and Z axis that is more important for you to take care of. On machines like the Prusa Mini, Ender 2, the Kangaroo KPS3, they are cantilevered, which means you don't generally have issues with your axis sagging. Now, you can see, I can wiggle this, but that doesn't mean that this whole thing is just going to fall over on me. There's not a lot of weight here. Things will wiggle, as you saw when we did 3D printing while driving, it doesn't always come out beautiful. So. Be careful with machines like that. Machines like the Sobel here that has a dual Z axis, if for some reason one is a little bit higher than the other, the machine doesn't always know this. And while printers with auto bed leveling probes might be able to compensate for this, at a certain point, they just can't. That's where it's up to you, yes, you, the viewer, to fix it. That involves axes leveling. Utilizing something that is the same height. Modbot, a, a buddy of mine, Daniel, did a great one where he used cans of soup to level out the X and Z axis on his Sobel. Soup cans are pretty much the same size as long as they're from the same brand. That's a great way to make sure that your axes here are going to be perpendicular to the table and more specifically, hopefully, the plate itself. If it's still not right, it's your bed level, redo it. If you have to re-square your axes, you're going to have to redo your bed level. But as far as the offset is concerned, there are three types. The too hot, too cold, and just right. Very Goldilocks method here. If you are too far away from your build plate, you will notice that the lines for your first layer won't even touch each other or won't be very smooth top surface. And what this means is that you don't have a great contact patch with your build plate. This can lead to inefficient first layer adhesion, meaning that your part is not going to stick to your build plate and potentially end up as a big plate of spaghetti. Now, I was raised in a Latin and Italian household, so I like me some spaghetti, but I want to know when it's coming and not just come back to a big plate of it. Especially because leaving food unattended in my house is dangerous. I'm looking at you, Victoria. But if it is too close, you'll see that in between the lines, there'll be a peak. Your ruffles have ridges, as I like to say. That is also a problem. Now, it's not as much of a problem specifically with textured build plates here like the Sovol has, but on smooth plates like a Prusa smooth plate or even a glass plate, that can be really problematic. Your first layer should look like glass with maybe some slight peaks, if that's your thing. I like to be a little closer than I need to be because it does ensure a better bite on the build plate. If you are running glass, be careful of that though because that can cause your part to weld itself to the glass, creating a bit more of a challenge for you. If you find that your part is stuck to a glass bed, go chuck it in the freezer for a little bit or if it happens to be the winter time, go toss it out in the snow for a bit and that differential in temperature should help the part release. Now be careful. If you're using plate glass or not specifically designed borosilicate glass, your glass plate can not only shatter, it can break into thousands of pieces. And I don't know about you, but I don't like 
glasses full of glass out of my ice maker. And I don't think you do either. So be careful about that. Make sure your build plate is at room temperature before you chuck that thing into the freezer. On most printers, you will have the ability to change your Z offset while your machine is printing. Ones with auto bed leveling probes will actually sometimes let you change it during the print. If your machine does not have that feature and it does not have auto bed leveling, you can go into the slicer and adjust it in the slicer, but please be careful of this because if you add too much Z offset or too little Z offset or you go negative, you can run into more problems. I recommend trying to leave your global Z offset in your slicer to zero and just adjusting it on your printer itself. Now, for some reason, your printer with out any special fancy auto bed leveling doesn't give you that option and the v-wheels are basically maxed out and it still isn't right we've got something else that we should be looking at mainly we need to be looking at your springs and where your limit switch is on printers without auto bed leveling you will have a z limit switch that tells the machine hey I've reached my Z0. If that limit switch is too high, there is no amount of adjusting your bed or adjusting your Z offset that is going to fix this for you. Printers can't go past their Z limit switch. Ones with soft limits like the Prusa or the Sovel here can because they don't have an actual limit switch. But most of the time, if your printer does have a limit switch, that is its limit. It's not going past it. There's a reason it's called a limit switch. What you can do is loosen it and move it down some. That's a totally reasonable thing to do. And you'll see that a very slight amount of movement is way more than you think. So be careful. If you do lower your Z limit switch, make sure to tighten your bed springs by quite a few turns. I'd much rather have you go back and re-level your bed with something like the Filament Friday bed leveling tool or the paper method, if that's your thing, than have your nozzle crash into your bed, either destroying your nozzle, destroying your bed, destroying your printer, or combinations of those three things. Nobody wants that. So in the long run, it is easier to get your first layer Z offset perfect or as close to it as you can get because it will result in better printing when it is perfect or as close to perfect as you can get it it should be smooth to the touch with little to no ridges or valleys in between the lines themselves if it's still not sticking and it looks like it's there your bed still might be dirty. You do need to clean your build plate. It is as easy as grabbing some alcohol, putting it on a paper towel, and then go ahead and cleaning that build plate off. That will help ensure there's no oil or anything left over from you touching it because your hands and your body is a little greasy compared to what the build plate of your printer wants. So give it a shot. And remember, check across the entire build plate, not in just one or two spots. I know you might print a lot more toward the center. And if your build plate itself is physically warped and you don't have auto bed leveling, do your best to get the center as close to perfect as you can. As you go further toward the edges, it might get too far or it might get too close. But as long as the center is as good as you can get it, that's where the bulk of your prints are going to end up anyways. If you do find that your build plate is warped for some reason, it might be time to either one, completely and utterly replace it, or two, get an auto bed leveling probe for your printer. I recommend the first and then the second. Quite frankly, I recommend them at the same damn time. If you're gonna replace the bed, you might as well upgrade to an auto bed leveling probe. If you do go ahead and add an auto bed leveling probe, no, it might not solve all your problems. And if you do add one, make sure you hard mount your bed. You don't wanna have both wheels that can adjust the level of the bed, as well as an auto bed leveling probe. A lot of times that just causes more problems than it solves. A hard mounting kit, whether it be a silicone riser or honestly a nylon lock nut kit would be just fine. And you can go to your local hardware store or one of my favorites, TrimCraftAviationRC.com. They don't pay me to say that, but Gino runs a really great company. Spring for the stainless. It's not much more expensive and you can thank me later or you can hate me later because you're going to have a lot of hardware on order. By the way, organization video coming up where we put together an ideal shop bench, in my opinion, for 3D printing. It would have an oscilloscope, but I don't have that kind of money. So, no oscilloscope. When it comes to Z offset, the first big thing is to make sure your bed is clean, because Z offset won't matter if it's not. If you do have a clean bed, well, then make sure it's not too far, not too close, and that it is just 
right. And that means you'll have a great printing experience. These all work toward getting you in the right attitude for 3D printing. If your first layer sticks, well, then we can completely write off the first layer as being the problem. We can move on to other mechanical issues. Remember, if you do have print issues and you are struggling to make things right, you can reach out to us, YouTube at 3DMusketeers.com, or slide into those DMs on the various social media platforms. We do a series every week called Print Fix Friday. There's one coming up in just a couple of days where we look at print failures and we talk about how to solve them. I think it might be useful, especially if you're new to this. And it's okay, we were all new at one point. My job is to share my knowledge with you and help you make awesome every single day. That's all I got for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, uh, future Grant here real quick before we go. Yesterday was Amber's birthday, so make sure to wish her a happy birthday down in those comments. See you guys later. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for all that you guys do. Also, thank you to the community. We just had a live stream that passed over 100 concurrent viewers, and that's kind of insane to me. I, I never would have thought that would happen in my lifetime, let alone this year. It's really cool to see that stuff happen. Thank you guys for your support. I greatly appreciate it. Right below me will be our entire series on getting back to basics with your 3D printers and getting them to work better again. And right next to that will be the maintenance and upgrade video series on this Prusa Mini because this bad girl is not stock. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.